Welcome back to the fifth episode of the SPSS Masterclass for Beginners. Here we are breaking down the statistical analysis software known as SPSS. So, so far, we have learned how to calculate the descriptive statistics of the data and convert them into standardized Z scores. Now, this video would be a little different. This is because we would be studying how to do a one sample Z test, which cannot be done by the SPSS drawdowns. But Z test is doable with SPSS. So stick around as we learn how to do a one sample Z test in the fifth episode of SPSS Masterclass for Beginners. Hey guys, my name is Shardul, hailing from Shavash Tutorials and creator of Shavash.co.in. I am also a junior research fellow at the Indian Institute of Information Technology, Alhaba. Before we begin the masterclass, if you are interested in any tech product, software or language, be it for coding or research purposes, then be sure to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button on this channel and also the bell icon next to it so that you never miss an update. Also, there's a complete playlist of the masterclass in the description so that you can go to the other videos when you are done with this one. Just click on the link and it will take you to the complete playlist. Now if you are here, you must be wondering how to do a one sample Z-test in SPSS. Well, not with the help of traditional drop-down menus of SPSS, let me tell you that. But don't leave because it is doable. You just need to know a bit of SPSS syntax. Now here's something interesting for you to know. The drop-downs of SPSS are not magic. They run on codes that are built in in SPSS. So if a test is not present, you can create your own syntaxes to run those tests. But that's not what we're going to do here. There are more experienced people in the field. We've created the syntax for Z-Test and we're going to use it for us. So let's begin. So the syntax we're using was given to us by how to stats. If you're new to SPSS, you should definitely check them out on YouTube and their website. You can download the syntax given by them from our description or even better from their website. That link is also given in our description. So to refresh your memory, I'll just say that you use a one sample Z test when you want to test the difference between a sample mean and a population mean, where the population standard deviation is also known. You don't actually need the raw data for this test, but rather the calculated values for the test. I'm talking about the syntax that we have been given here. The example that we're discussing today, the hypothesis is that the sample mean of the age of the employees of an organization is higher than the age of the employees of their industry sector. Here are the values for your test. The size of the sample is 25. The mean of the sample is 44.2. The population mean is 36.9 and the population standard deviation is 10. So in this case, we are going to test the hypothesis that a sample mean of 44.2 with a sample size of 25 is larger than 36.9. Now to actually run the Z-test, we need to grab the syntax from the website of how to stats, which is given in our description. So go to their page and you just need to copy the syntax that is given here by selecting the complete syntax and just using control C or right click and copy the syntax. Then we will go to the SPSS to create a new syntax file. So to create the new syntax file in SPSS, go to file, then new, then syntax. The new screen that has opened up over there, just right click and click on paste to get the syntax on your screen. Now all the information over here on top is just the explanation of how this codes work. Now the real syntax starts with the data list. In this, the SPS software is told what each of the data points will be. The data must be entered in the following order. N, which is the sample size. 
then sample mean then population mean and population standard deviation all you have to manipulate in this syntax are these four numbers under the begin data command line now these numbers are those which came with the original syntax the first value over here is 35 so we need to put 25 our own sample size the second one is the sample mean if you have a raw data you can calculate the sample mean of the processes discussed in our previous video once you've done that put the value here our study has 44.2 as the sample mean the population mean of our study is 36.9 so we replace 100 with 36.9 and the last value the population standard deviation in our problem is 10 the hypothesis is whether this 44.2 is larger than 36.9 or statistically significantly different from 36.9 so when you've got this syntax pasted and you've specified these four values you just have to select the complete code that you want to run and just press the run selection icon here in the output we see that the z statistic is 3.65 and here's the p value 0.00026 is the z value larger than the null hypothesis z statistic and the p value is telling that with the alpha value of 0.05 which we're trying to get less than is statistically significant because the p value is 0 0.00026 which is significantly lower than 0 0.05 therefore we reject the null hypothesis that the sample mean is equal to the population mean had this p value been greater than 0 0.05 you wouldn't have been able to reject the null hypothesis so it is telling me that the sample is taken from a different population than our study population so our 44.2 is statistically different from 36.9 and the Cohen's D effect size is 0.73 that's a very large effect this basically means that the sample mean is 73 standard deviation larger than the population mean but if you're just beginning to do the one sample z test the main pieces of information are the z statistic and the p value which has rejected the null hypothesis so yeah that's how it's done so that right there is how you calculate the one sample z test in spss you can perform this test by using the syntax from the description of the how to stats website which you can find in our video description below and specify the four values in the command line in the next video we will explore how to do a t-test in spss if you enjoyed it make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss the next video of the spss masterclass series so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next episode of the masterclass series